Theropod dinosaurs are the most charismatic terrestrial predators in Earth's history, with complex ecologies, physiologies, and evolutionary relationships. From movies, to books, to video games, theropods have left a cultural footprint unlike any other group of extinct vertebrates. And even these terrifying and majestic animals have an elite group within them, the megatheropods. If all theropods formed the ranks of a military, then these are the officers, the generals, and the supreme commanders. There are a few definitions floating around the internet about what exactly a megatheropod is, so here's a modified version of mine from 2017. A megatheropod is any theropod dinosaur that consistently attains an average adult mass of 5,000 kilograms or higher. This definition is more exclusionary than my old video, and that's because while researching this, I put an emphasis on consistency and utilizing multiple mass estimates per species from different sources, which I've linked in the description. I've split megatheropods into four different tiers. Soldiers, Knights, Artillery, and Destroyers. Megatheropods from all different clades slot into these tiers, so we're going to start with reviewing those in the soldier tier and work our way up, learning cool facts about each animal in the roster until we get to the top. We'll also assign each species a Jerry score, or how many average bull African bush elephants it takes to equal the mass of each megatheropod. Why a Jerry score, you may ask? Our elephant's name is Jerry. Say hi to Jerry. He weighs 5,374 kilograms, and Stupendemus is his favorite animal. I like turtles. Our first entry in the soldier tier is the Sumerian giant, specimen name PRC-61. Described in 2012 from a maxilla and some incomplete teeth found in Thailand, its position on the theropod family tree is uncertain. It was estimated at about 5,000 kilograms, which barely meets the requirement for inclusion in the megatheropod elite force. But hey, it made it. Sorphagonix, which may be Epantarius amplexus, which may be Allosaurus, is next to join the soldier ranks because we're not quite sure where it belongs size-wise for now. Dan Folks, in a recent blog, indicated based on some photos of OMNH bones that some of Sorophagonix's measurements were comparable to the Gigantosaurus holotype. It's conservatively placed in the soldier tier for now because we don't have the hard data necessary to calculate a true size. But as more information comes to light, it's possible that the Morris Information Giant gets bumped up a couple tiers. Plus, the idea of a gigantic allosaurid running around Jurassic North America is super awesome. Edmarker Rex, or is it a giant Torvosaurus? is a welcome addition to the elite forces of theropod dumb. A mega-sized megalosaurid at 5,200 kilograms, it looks like a monitor lizard got hit with a gamma bomb. Described by Robert Bacher in 1992, it was said that it rivaled T-Rex in total length, although it didn't have the same bulk. It's wonderful to see lesser-known theropod clades get some love. Chinese paleontology has certainly been incredibly successful in the past few decades, bringing us some of the best bird fossils in the world, but the Middle Kingdom also sports its fair share of giant predators. NHMG 8500 is an enormous tooth, comparable in size to the biggest carcrodontosaurids and tyrannosaurids, but appears to have belonged to an enormous Megaraptoran. Another giant Chinese theropod, Zhusheng Tyrannus, doesn't quite seem to consistently hit the 5 ton mark required for inclusion on this list, but if we get more material, I wouldn't be surprised if that changed. Its Megaraptoran comrade, on the other hand, will represent China for now. Oxalaya, may it rest in peace, is the largest in the soldier tier, at approximately 6,000 kilograms. It's a huge Brazilian spinosaurid known only from two referred maxillae, which may have been destroyed in the National Museum fire of 2018. I wait for the day when we as a society will be worthy of finding more referable material for this incredible animal. Now on to the night tier. Acrocanthosaurus atacensis is one of my personal favorite theropods. This sail-backed North American predator actually has its own holiday. Acrocanthosaurus Appreciation Day is November 11th, for those of you who didn't know. It has such an edgy design, like if the band Evanescence were reincarnated as a carcrodontosaurid. The claws, the jaws, the pose. A 2005 study indicated that it would have used its arms as massive hooks to rip out chunks of flesh in its prey. Hard to get more metal than that. Dinochirus morificus recently stole a spotlight in prehistoric planet, and for good reason. Its final description in 2014 solved the mystery of what its massive arms were for, revealing its true nature as a specialized ornithomimosaur instead of the Godzilla-sized carnivorous demon that had been theorized for so long. Why they thought it made sense to compare a pair of super long arms to Tyrannosaurs, I don't know, but the real animal is much more interesting than just another giant carnivore. While it coexisted with giant predators such as Tarbosaurus, it itself would have eaten plants, fish, and other small animals. Don't mistake it for a gentle giant, however. This critter could lay a smack down on anything in its environment that mistook it for lunch. Those claws are not messing around. Therizinosaurus colonoformis, despite what its name may imply, is not a turtle. 
It's more of a titanic reptilian ground sloth with scythe-like claws adapted for scraping leaves off of branches and potentially using his tools for display and defense. It lived alongside Dinochirus, and I'm sure that the two animals built clubhouses together and had sleepovers to celebrate that they were the only megatheropods in the neighborhood that didn't exclusively eat meat. Next up we have Megalosaurus ingens, which also may or may not be a huge Torvosaurus species. Based on a huge claw from Tanzania, it's another one of those fragmentary giants whose size could fluctuate depending on future material. Molina Perez and Laramendi estimated it at 6,400 kilograms in 2019, however, so in this case we have actual numbers to go off of. By the way, the art in this book is amazing. If you don't own a copy, go buy one. Or ask Santa for it, either way. Carcrodontosaurus saharicus is a complicated little weasel. Its shark teeth are instantly recognizable and has been depicted in a famous documentary series, but we really don't have a lot of information about the animal itself. The North African giant was once touted as the largest theropod ever, but recent calculations based on its more complete relative Meraxes gigas place it at just over 6,500 kilograms on average. I still dream of having an accurate Carcrodontosaurus in a movie. This guy is such a baddie he got a whole family of giant theropods named after him. The South African Titan, a Carcrodontosaurus from South Africa, hence the name, might be the biggest of the night tier. Described in 2011 from an incomplete tooth that was described as among the widest measurements from any theropod teeth around, its 7 ton weight estimate is nothing to sneeze at. If there was ever a world war where each country's armies were decided by the owners of incomplete fossil teeth discovered within their borders, South Africa would be just fine. Okay, here's Tyrannotitan chubutensis. I've said on the channel before, and I stand by my statement that Tyrannotitan is probably the coolest generic name for a theropod I've ever heard. Tyrant Titan? You can't get any more Elder Dragon video game boss than that. Unless someone finds a giant theropod with huge horns and names it Nikol Bolas or something. Dang, that's a good idea. Anyway, Tyrannotitan doesn't just have a cool name. It's also an incredible animal in general. It lived in Argentina in the early Cretaceous, had wicked neural spines, and weighed over 7,100 kilograms. Good candidate for a spirit animal, honestly. Mapusaurus rose is another South American giant. It had to be. It lived with and potentially hunted Argentinosaurus, one of the largest sauropods of all time. It may actually be the direct anagenetic ancestor of the more recent Gigantosaurus, so that's pretty cool. It was discovered in a bone bed that contained the remains of up to nine individuals of varying sizes and ages, with potential implications for group behavior in megatheropods. Overall, an awesome animal. Speaking of awesome animals, here's what might be a Spinosaurus? We're really not sure anymore. But VSNM V4047 is at least some kind of Spinosaurian. It's a huge partial rostrum that infers an individual longer than 14 meters and about 7,800 kilograms. Whether it's a Spinosaurus or just a close relative, it was certainly enormous. Now, how about actual Spinosaurus? Maybe. I'm so scared to talk about this animal now since everything we know about it could change before this video is even released. It's difficult to determine what an average adult for this species is since the holotype was destroyed, the neotype isn't even fully grown, and everything else is super fragmentary. I'm going to be pretty liberal here and use the NHMUK specimen as calculated by Dan Folks, since we're pretty darn sure it's a fully grown adult. It's supposedly comparable to the VSNM specimen, so that's another enormous Spinosaur. But who really knows? Alright, here we are. The biggest of the big, the scariest of the scary, the rulers of the theropod kingdom. I'm sure you've already figured out what critters made it this far, so let's jump into it. Giganotosaurus carolinii, Giganotosaurus, Giganot... Giganotosaurus just sounds better, dang it. Fight me, Colin Trevorrow. Either way, the Giga is indeed gigantic. Based on a composite of five different volumetric analyses, including the new GDI by Dan that puts the paratype at 10.4 tons, I calculated an average mass for the taxon of 8,420 kilograms. Discovered the same year as the first Jurassic Park film was released, Gigantosaurus represents the largest species of the theropod group with the largest average mass. Carcrodontosaurs were huge! Size estimates for Giga in particular have been all over the place ever since it was discovered, and I'm sure that they'll continue to change, but right now, an 8.4 ton average seems pretty solid. It's quite a jump from 2013, when Scott Hartman provided that weight as a liberal estimate for the paratype. And now, for the king. Tyrannosaurus rex has ruled the public consciousness for over a century, and our understanding of it has changed dramatically. Gone is the awkward, weirdly humanoid iguana replaced by clever, powerful, agile, and dynamic predator that can crush metal in its jaws and track prey from miles away. 
Interestingly enough, Tyrannosaurus is the only Tyrannosaur with consistent size estimates higher than 5,000 kilograms. Zushang, Tyrannus, and Tarbosaurus tend to hover around the 4-ton mark on average, making T-Rex more than twice their mass. The evolutionary and environmental pressures that resulted in one member of the family snowballing into such a gigantic predator must have been intense, but it makes sense when we look at the heavily armored living fortresses that T-Rex shared its world with. Giants like Triceratops and Ankylosaurus would have laughed at any lesser predator. To paraphrase Wolverine, T-Rex was the best at what it did, and what it did wasn't very nice. A disclaimer is necessary here. Based on 11 confirmed adult specimens and specimens of adult size across 14 different sources, T-Rex's average adult mass was 8,764 kilograms. That's less than 400 above Gigantosaurus, at a difference of only 4%. Given the margin of error of these studies, along with the nature of mass estimation for extinct taxa in general, it's entirely possible that the gap between these two species could be smaller, or non-existent, or even in the other direction. We have a much larger sample size of Tyrannosaurus specimens than we do of Gigantosaurus. Maybe Giga was much smaller than we thought, or much larger. The paucity of the fossil record simply forces us to shrug and say this is our best guess. Well, there you have it. All 17 megatheropods currently known to science. Unless, of course, you know about another fragmentary giant that you're dying to tell me about. If you do, please link a source in the comment section, I would love to learn more. Dinosaurs have a tendency to surprise us, and maybe in one or five or ten years we'll have discovered a new megatheropod that towers above the rest. And if we do, you'll know where to find the info, right here on the Vividend. I'll see you next time.